Hi guys, I'm Millers, and I'm more than 10 inches shorter than your grandpa. Er, I mean, this grandpa, which stands at 186 centimeters or 73.2 inches tall. Speaking of height, the tallest Temtem released so far is Zenerith at 310 centimeters tall. That's the equivalent of about 10.2 feet. That's taller than the ceiling in most homes. That's terrifying. It used to be possible to encounter uncatchable Luma Zenerus at the Tuai Shrine. That had to have felt bad. The only thing you could do was knock out the Luma Zenerus or run away. If you like running, you can run infinitely on this rock in Kisawa if you hold the arrow keys in the correct way. I'll let you figure out how to do it yourself. Or you can figure out what's under this truck. This kid tells you he sees something under there. It's probably nothing. Or is it? The truck is on Dennis, the same island where you meet Max. Your rival Max is non-binary. That is arguably not a useless fact, but I've included it anyway since a lot of people don't realize this. You probably also didn't realize that you can beat a dojo rematch without attacking any of the dojo master's temtem. I did that this week and I'll post a video of it next week. You can actually fish in Sophia's dojo, though the temtem you encounter are from the Solaro River. The background even looks like you're outside in the Solaro River. It's faster to just surf on the river than fish in the dojo. Sophia's dojo is the only area where you can fish but not surf other than parts of the Zolot Reserve and the Nuru Lodge. You can fish off of this tall dock at the Nuru Lodge. Too bad you can't fish while sitting on this bench. It sure looks comfy. There are eight benches in the breeding center. If you hold the correct arrow keys down, you can butt scoot continuously on these diagonal benches. I'd be careful when trying this though. I got kicked from the server when I did it for too long. As of version 0.6.17, there are three techniques with the word kick in it. Kick, hook kick, and double kick. You'll get a kick out of knowing the 69th Temtem in the Tempedia is Saipat, the 137th Temtem in the Tempedia is Kinu, and the 420th Temtem in the Tempedia doesn't exist because not that many Temtem exist. But if you're now wondering what I think you're wondering, the 420th Pokemon is Cherubi. <clears throat> Back to Temtem. Before radars were added, it was possible to tell if a Luma was caught outside of the side park at full odds if it wasn't a temp card plus, but not a normal temp card. That is because Lumas that are bred automatically go into normal temp cards. It is currently impossible to get a Bigu in a temp card plus, since they aren't encounterable anywhere in the wild outside of side park. One of the first two Temtem to be featured in Side Park was Oshiera. A lot of people hunted for Luma Oshiera because we thought we could use them as a mount later on. This was based on the Kickstarter mount image. We were wrong. <laughs> the other Temtem featured alongside Oshiera was Barnchi. Barnchi can fly but prefers to stay on the ground and use their minds to attack. Lenitris found the first ever wild Luma Barnchi in Temtem's alpha phase. It took them 254 hours to find one. That was back when the Luma rate was 1 in 4,000. Apparently there was a point in time where Lumas weren't guaranteed to have 3 SPs as well. Since this Luma was found in the alpha version, it has since been erased and now only exists in our memories. Silence. The antithesis of noise. Tatsuru make this noise when you send them out or encounter them in battle. Tatsuru! I'm kidding, they sound like this. Which version do you prefer? The name Tateru comes from the Japanese word Tateru, which means erect. Ya, the head developer of Temtem, has a Luma Tateru backpack that is currently unavailable in the game. So cute! Bun Bun is arguably cuter. Bun Bun is said to be a remnant of the times Tukma and Kisawa were a single island. Their earth typings come from Kisawa and the crystal typings come from Tukma. Another earth Temtem, Kiri, carves rocks to protect their head and snout. However, the protection you see on its evolution Karin is part of its actual skull. Yeah, that's not rock, that's bone. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I'm not sure if Gulder even has any bones. In patch 0.6.16, Prima made this toxic Tukmani Temtem more thick. Yes, thick with two Cs. It's in the official patch notes. Tukuma is so toxic because the volcanoes in Omnonesia spews toxic fumes and ashes that get blown over towards Tukma. One of Tukma's native Temtem, Mushi, likes to eat minerals and possibly crystal Temtem too. Maybe we should be more careful when sending out our Mushoks with our Gyalases. Hmm. Another one of Tukma's native Temtem, Platypit, was actually a fake mon drawn by 50 shades of Heliolisk. 
Krima obtained the rights to use this fake mount as a temptum when the Kickstarter backer named Poke Ninja chose Platypet as a temptum they wanted to add. There's a wild loom of Platox in the overworld that you cannot catch. It's just there to taunt you. According to the Tempedia, Platypet are closely related to Saipat. Pokemon fans could probably tell where the inspiration from Saipat came from. It's a duck. Holding a Psy. A Psy duck, if you will. Hmm. Saipat also happens to be the namesake of the Psy Park. There were about four hours in Temtem where you could catch bananas in the Psy Park. During the first SV week of Psy Park ever, there was a bug that caused Temtem encountered in the park to sometimes have missing HP and stamina. The bug also caused the SVs of Wild Temtem to be much higher than intended. Players soon figured out that Temtem with more initial missing HP and stamina had better SVs and communicated this to each other through the official Temtem Discord. In an attempt to stop the developers from noticing this bug, Sir Biscuit suggested we codename HP and stamina as Bananas. Bananas soon came to mean any high SV Temtem initially missing HP and stamina in the Psy Park. Bananas often had many perfect SVs. It wasn't unheard of to catch an all-perfect banana. This bug was unfortunately patched within a few hours of it going live in-game. These Raber and Kalazoo bananas are probably the only perfect wild encountered Temtem that will ever be caught in the game. The odds of any Temtem you catch being a perfect Temtem without any Cypark or Radar SV boost is 1 in 781 billion 250 million. In other words, you have a 0.0000000000128% chance that the Temtem you just caught is perfect, assuming it's not a Luma. The glowing pattern on rays is said to be a birthmark with a shape unique to each individual rays. Too bad they can't change the pattern on each individual rays' model like they do for Koish. That would be awesome. The chance for two Koish in a double encounter to have the same exact pattern in Nuru Lodge is 1 in 864. It's not as rare as you'd think. In the other Koish area, Lake Moyo, farmers train Garyo to harvest seaweed. Dropley and Garyo are amphibians. They probably descended from the evolutionary link between aquatic Temtem and land-dwelling Temtem from long ago. Perhaps that evolutionary link existed when Draconic Temtem roamed the archipelago. According to Valor's Tempedia entry, there used to be a Draconic variety of Temtem. This is probably referring to the equivalent of real-life dinosaurs while also giving a nod to Pokemon's dragon type. The name of another dragon-inspired Temtem, Shuin, comes from the Chinese word Shui, meaning water, and the word pristine. This especially makes sense since Shuin are said to filter the water of the Kakama Sanot. You can win Perfect or even Luma Temtem if you watch my streams on Monday starting at 11pm EST. The stream link is in the description below. That's all the useless Temtem facts for now. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, leaving a comment telling everyone what you think the most surprising fact was, and sharing this video with your friends. If you want Temtem guides and other fun Temtem content, subscribe and hit the bell icon, and I'll see you next time!